Hey guys, Mike here. So what happened was that the internet was not working properly. So they're going to send out someone to check out my lines. They're actually going to give me a replacement modem router because I was getting half the speed. And then by the time they were testing it, I was getting about one quarter of the speed. So I should really be getting about 900 something up and down with the setup that I have. And I know this for a fact because in my first video, I, did, I used the same exact AT&T service, same exact house and location, same exact lines, except the only difference was that the modem was different. And of course, that's why I was able to do this BGW 210-700. So they're going to send out some new person to come out and test it out and uh, check out my lines and hopefully give me a, one that works out just fine. So I know there are going to be some frequently asked questions about this, and that is what this video is about uh, a week later. So um, I gave you an update on that in here. It looks like Rafael Villa had asked about, um, because he didn't unplug his Netgear Orbi router, it changed the IP address. How can I go back in Orbi settings to change it back? I've tried various addresses, and I get a WAN conflict page asking me to sign in. That's right. So I had the same thing. I didn't actually record that portion because if you had actually followed my video completely, you wouldn't have had that problem. But for those of you guys that didn't, I went and Googled that real quickly, and this is how you do it. So Netgear support, how do I log into my Netgear router? Well, first of all, uh, you got to be connected to the Wi-Fi of your Netgear router or directly connected uh, with a physical cable from your computer that you're going to be accessing the router from. And the Netgear router and and the cable has to be plugged in into the LAN port that's LAN LAN port but Netgear thought about this and they did something pretty simple um, so they have a couple ways to do it if you have a Netgear router with the Nighthawk uh, see which ones are supported you can go through um, download the app and use that and access it through your phone or you can go through router login.net R-O-U-T-E-R login.net. All right, now if you're connected directly to your Netgear, uh, what's going to happen is, is that it will point you to whatever the address was. But in my case, what happened was it automatically switched me to the IP address 10.0.0.1. Okay? So if you did the exact same thing that I did and you had the Netgear Orbi router, you can type in 10.0.0.1 and you will get access to your router. Okay. Or just do routerlogin.net. So if you click that, that, that will actually pull up uh, your router interface and then it'll pop up with the login screen. This is where you log in to your router. Now when you set it up, you must have picked up uh, your or set up your password in here. Uh, never keep the default password, but if you need to do the default password, you never change your password, um, you can actually go in and search what the default passwords are and change it. Okay, always change it. Never leave a default. That's that's just really bad IT, even for yourself at home. Okay, that's how people hack into your networks and stuff is people don't change your passwords. So change your password. All right. So again, you go to routerlogin.net. And this only works if you are directly connected to your router. So make sure you're connecting to your Netgear router, right? So when you do that, um, this will pop up. It'll pop up with the router login page. Now, again, as I said, because I'm using a Netgear uh, Orbi router, this is exactly what it looks like, all right? So this right here is what it looks like. What you want to do is go, I believe you go in advance. Like the interface will look a little bit different um, from firmware to firmware. This is the latest firmware version. But this is exactly what you want to get into, all right? Now, um, let's see, advanced. Uh, you, you go from basic to advanced, and then you go to LAN setup. This is where you change it, okay? So if you want to change it back to what it was default, you will change the numbers to match what this, what you see here. Do exactly this, okay? See this? So switch it to 192.168.1.1, all right? Now, if you go over here, you'll probably see if you made the mistake and you didn't unplug your router and you were using the exact same setup that I had in the Motorola, uh, sorry, the BGW uh, BGW 710, it would have changed itself to 10.0.0.1 so that it would hopefully not have that conflict, right? So you do that, you come in here and you change these numbers, 192.168.1.1. 
and you click apply. Now, after you click apply, it's going to take a couple minutes. Um, after you click apply, it's going to it's going to reset it. It's going to set it up. It's going to have to reboot and readjust the IP address, so you'll lose connection to it. But just give it a couple of minutes; it'll load right back up. I think there might even be a countdown. I'm not going to do this here right now because I don't need to change the IP address. But I think there's going to be a countdown timer here. It'll give you an idea. I think roughly about two minutes for it to go ahead and boot up. And then after that, you should be pretty good to go. Like if you followed everything that I did in that last video, it doesn't really matter that you change this because it'll know that it is the uh, MAC address uh, that it's going to look for. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much all you got to do. Now, if you, for whatever reason, you still have a problem getting to this, um, and there's still some sort of conflict going on, disconnect everything from your Netgear Orbi router. Just disconnect the from the WAN port, which is where you had the modem uh, plugged into from my tutorial here. Disconnect the WAN port. Disconnect everything from it. Just connect to it via Wi-Fi, and then go and and then and then you know log in using uh, routerlogin.net. Okay. So this here is the exact same thing as going directly to the IP address. Dot one, dot one. And an alternative way of getting to your Netgear, uh, Netgear Orbi is to go down to the Windows and then type in, um, in here, type in a command prompt. Basically, you're trying to open up the command prompt, right? So you do that, and then it'll, it'll pop this little console thing up here which is a remnant from where Microsoft DOS used to be. And type in the words IP config. And this will give you some important information on here that you want to take a look at. I'm just going to maximize. Oh, actually, I'd have to change font size separately, and that's going to be a little bit annoying. All right, so what you're looking for right here is the default gateway. Okay, see this? Default gateway. Again, if you're connected to the Netgear Orbi router, it will tell you exactly what IP address your router is set at. In this case, is 192.168.1.1. Okay, you got that? So if you type in whatever it says down here, this address down below this, this is the MAC address. But if you type in this there in your browser, you should also be able to get into the login page. Same thing, right? And and really, uh, Netgear really made it fairly easy by just going to routerlogin.net because they, they, just, they just reconfigured the host files went, oops, routerlogin.net, routerlogin.net, there we go. They just reconfigured this to point directly to their Netgear Orbi router, all right? Okay, so that's how you do that. Hopefully that answers that question. Let's see what other questions that we have on here. Great video, right, right. Uh, so I get a WAN conflict, but yeah, ask me to sign in, that's right. So yeah, unplug it, unplug everything from it, go into the Orbi settings and set that up properly, or just... Um, you know, set, set the IP address back to what it is that you want to do, and then just watch my video redo everything from scratch. That's a sure way to get that done. All right. Uh, hi, Mike. Thank you for the video. What mode am I supposed to set it? DHCP. That's right. Set it to DHCP. That's correct. Um, I suggest using Brave Browser to remove the ads. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Uh, I, as much as I like to help people, um, I also make money from my YouTube. So if everybody does this, then I'm not going to make money from YouTube. And if I don't make money from YouTube, I'm not going to produce videos like this. Or I'm just going to have to put all this stuff behind a, a paid gateway. And that's not great. So uh, please don't do that. Let's see. Thanks for video. Would you would you have to change the subnet? Oh, okay. So this guy had a problem. Um, Matias had a problem with uh, Cloudflare. Website hosted by Cloudflare. I think what... What happened with this is that Cloudflare was down over the weekend. So I replied and I let him know that I think that is the case. But I think that's the only reason why he was having problems. But I I haven't heard back from him. So we'll see. Perhaps that's that's resolved. All right. Do you plug in LAN cable from AT&T modem to WAN port? Okay. So from the AT&T modem, you go from that IP address, uh, the IP port 1, uh, and then connect it into the WAN port of your router for my tutorial because it's IP pass through. IP pass through basically passes the public IP address directly to um, directly to the router. Okay, that that's the whole point there. So that you don't get uh, double net double network address translation. You can have everything communicate that needs to communicate from inside your network to outside the network and vice versa. That's the whole point of this. Not not having to do all that filtration and stuff. 
Greg says, yeah, my setup is pretty expensive. It's over $300 for the setup. Well, actually, my whole setup costs maybe about 1000 But, um, you know, if you just get that, that one piece, yeah, it is $300. Sometimes this is on sale. So, I, so recently, Netgear had a sale, and Amazon also had a sale. But I found that this is really the only way for me to cover a big property, uh, about, about 10,000, 11,000 square foot property here, and multiple... Uh, you know, I, I have multiple building setups here at this LA location and be able to get all the security camera Wi-Fi coverage perfectly. And I, I realize they don't need gig speed, but this was the best system at the time. And it's still working great. It could still handle the full gig speeds. So that's why I went ahead and did that. Greg also shared a whole bunch of headaches that he's had with AT&T. And I feel you. Um... And then he fell for the sales pitch when he walked into Sam's Club. So let me tell you this. Comcast is much worse. Uh, that's what I replied. Uh, their service is much, much worse. So the issue that I had, uh, I went through AT&T chat. It took them half an hour or more to go ahead and respond. But once they did, I was able to reach out to someone. And they had me do all these tests that I already did. And I think that it, the problem was uh, most likely with my modem. Yeah. So in the end, uh, though, after the chatting, and you got to do exactly what they ask you to do, he at least, at, at least uh, agreed to send someone out. So I, I'll have an update about that a little bit later. All right. So if you guys have any more questions about this setup, um, yeah, just go ahead and comment down below. You can tweet out at me and Twitter, and I will record an update as much as I can while I'm still down here in LA. I'm, I'm back down here in LA temporarily. All right, thanks for watching. Please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.